Welcome to Shared Insights, the podcast from BA Insight. My name is Pete Wright, and I am joined today by Jeff Freed, our CTO. Jeff, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Always fun to talk to you, Pete. We teased at our very last show last year, we teased that we were going to be talking, uh, this was in your predictions list, uh, about uh, these communication collaboration tools. We talked about Microsoft Teams and Slack and Facebook Workplace. Well, today we're going to kick off the new year talking about exactly that with a very special guest. His name is Peter O'Kelly of O'Kelly Associates. Peter has been working with communication and collaboration tools since the early 1980s. He's worked on the Notes product management team and later ran product management for Groove Networks. He's been an industry analyst at Burton Group. He's worked on enterprise collaboration solutions at Microsoft, an incredibly talented guy and a great resource for us today. Peter O'Kelly, welcome to Shared Insights. Well, thank you very much. I'm pleased to be here and look forward to comparing notes with you. This podcast uh, it, it was teased, I think, as a result of a digital workplace session that you both did at the Guild Bain conference together. Uh, Jeff, why don't you set us up a little bit for this conversation on Teams, Facebook, Workplace, and Slack? Sure, absolutely. And I'll, I'll, I'll continue from where you left it. Peter and I literally met by doing digital workplace education together. This was right after Teams was introduced. There was so much audience interest that we had sort of an impromptu panel around that. And what we're talking about, for the listeners that may not know about it, uh, uh, are a emergence of a set of, uh, I'll call them chat-based collaboration tools. Slack has been the darling of the industry for the last you know, year and a half, a very, very rapid rise. It is a, uh, a very simple user interface, but as a company, they've had huge hype and amazing valuations. And... In the last quarter of 2016, Facebook introduced Workplace by Facebook, which has been in you know pilot for maybe a year, but came out in October and was viewed as being a competitor of both Office 365 and Slack. And then in November, Microsoft introduced Microsoft Teams, which is in preview now, and had a lot of press about that being a quote-unquote Slack killer. Part of this was because Slack took out a full-page ad in the New York Times welcoming Microsoft to the space as their competitor. So it got a lot of attention. Uh, So what we're really talking about is this class of tools and what is shaping up to be quite a bit of a battle in 2017. Uh, Peter, would would you... uh, agree with that characterization or uh, anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've been working with communication and collaboration tools for the better part of 30 years. And I, I think this is lining up to be the most interesting and potentially disruptive year so far for that part of the market. That makes for the most interesting question. Like this this part of the market in terms of easy collaboration tools. I, I personally use Slack uh, regularly. I'm part of, you know, 12 or 13 teams at this point. And oh, some... Pete, uh, Pete I, yeah. I have to interject because yeah. that means I can call you a slacker. <laughs> You know, though, thanks to Stuart Butterfield and team, I can now wear that badge with pride. Yes. Let's just let's just say I I actually I, I adore Slack, but the utility of of Slack in terms of of a tool that inspires communication and collaboration, uh, it, well, let's just say results are varied. Uh, my greatest curiosity here, and this is coming mostly as a as an end user from an end user perspective, is what do we get out of these, and and which one stands the greatest opportunity to actually inspire real and productive collaboration and utility for institutional uh, users. There are a bunch of interesting market dynamics that are coming together here at the same time. And if we take the very long view on this, a lot of things have been challenging, even going back to the late 1980s when Notes was first introduced. You see products like Notes and then SharePoint, certainly, as well. And the enterprise incumbents, um, so IBM's out there with Notes and then with um, other tools such as Connections and Microsoft continued to evolve SharePoint. But I think the success of Slack is a very clear indication that 
all of the needs in the market were not being met. There, you, know, you see a lot of people who are really excited about using Slack, and you didn't see that level of end user enthusiasm very often. I mean, maybe back in the late 1980s or early 1990s before the web wave. But since then, there's been, I think, a lot of frustration from enterprise end users who are being told by their IT counterparts that this is going to be all that you need and we'll install, for instance, classic SharePoint on-premises and then you'll be off and running. And I think one of the reasons for the frustration of the end users is that the tools on the consumer side for communication and collaboration have evolved so rapidly that when people have access to things like Facebook Messenger, for example, on the consumer side, and Slack did a great job of adapting a lot of the same tools and techniques in its tool, then people put those side by side with the more traditional enterprise ones, and it's not a close contest for many people. And that put the onus back on the enterprise players, and on the short list for that certainly would say Microsoft and um, Google primarily in, in recent years because of the strength of SharePoint and Office and also Google Apps slash now G Suite on Google's side. And it's really put a lot of pressure on Microsoft, Google, and other players in this market to basically accelerate their game. They needed to do better with mobile. They needed to have a better experience for people who are, are familiar with cloud applications. They need to make social actions something that is the things that are available throughout their tools instead of a separate place that you would go to. They needed to provide more of a modern user experience so it didn't feel like you're using something that was designed in the 1990s when you uh, were working with these tools at work. And then there's also opportunities to revitalize productivity applications. You know, you think about the types of things that many people do in Slack. They're doing things that seem very natural, but they're actually pretty advanced hypertext compared to the kinds of things that people had done in, um, again, tools such as SharePoint. And then another thing that's just emerging at this point in these tools is the ability to leverage social graphs and machine learning to do things like predictive analytics so that the, so that the tools can proactively recommend things to you that you may not even be aware that they exist, but resources that could be useful to you. So the short version on that is, I think, that the market frankly got a little bit stale and Slack mixed things up in a lot of ways. And now Facebook, I don't think fit Workplace by Facebook is just a reaction to Slack. I think it had been underway and certainly had been used inside Facebook for many years. But I think Slack sort of validated a market opportunity that now these other vendors are um, very much focused on. And Teams is the the new app from Microsoft that addresses the same space. Where, where is Google? I don't see Google and Google Voice and, and G Suite really fitting. It feels like they're, they're missing this uh, in this process, whereas someone like Atlassian with HipChat is definitely providing a good sort of, I think of these as chat-oriented collaboration tools. I haven't seen Google taking initiative. It, it's a funny thing, you know, going back to Google's, uh, dare I say, experiments with Google Wave and then Google Plus and trying to trying to do these these big audacious things that it doesn't take very long to start feeling like they actually don't care so much about those things. Right? They just seem to fall off the map. I'm curious where their market related opportunities are. Well, there've definitely been rumors about. Google perhaps acquiring Slack or Atlassian. Mm -hmm. There were even rumors about Microsoft perhaps acquiring Slack. I, I don't listen to those things particularly because I find if you keep your eye on sort of what are people using and what are the trends in the long view, that, that's much more productive. I do think that the Microsoft introduction of Teams, although it was in the works uh, previously, definitely got was informed by the success of Slack. In the Microsoft suite, there already were tools like Skype, Outlook, SharePoint, and Yammer. That's a case where perhaps the world did need another collaboration tool that was more modern and more more like the consumer experience. But 
I've met a lot of people quite confused about how this fits within the Microsoft suite. I don't think Microsoft itself has positioned Teams as a so-called Slack killer. I mean, certainly that was a pretty good, big buzz in the tech press and in the blogosphere. But and it, I think it's also important to understand that Teams is not simply like a quickly pulled together clone of Slack. Teams is positioned within the Microsoft offering set as chat a chat workspace for Teams. But it's actually much broader than that because it builds on a lot of things that Microsoft has already delivered with both Azure and Office 365 infrastructure services. So yes, Teams is fundamentally centered around chat, both private chat and team chat with channels that are familiar to Slack users. But there's also a lot more in there, including tying into Office 365 infrastructure services for groups, for governance, for the Microsoft Graph. Eventually, it takes advantage of both SharePoint and OneDrive for file sharing. It takes advantage of OneNote for managing team or private chat notes. And as you mentioned, it certainly ties in with Exchange Online, Skype, other things, and, and some new tools as well, like Microsoft Planner. So I think that Teams, ultimately, if you look at what's net new in Teams, as you just suggested, Jeff, I think it's it's really the user experience is the biggest change. Whereas before, if you took somebody who's new to the work, work environment and said, here's Office 365, have at, it, have at it, then there'd be some confusion about which of these many overlapping tools do I use? for specific needs, whereas with Teams, if you're coming into it with somebody who's got a lot of experience with Facebook or Slack, um, that type of more modern experience, I think that they'll find Teams immediately familiar. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I use Slack. I'm a Slacker myself. I <laughs> the truth use... comes out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, I have to share that we were on vacation in Costa Rica, and my son discovered that his spirit animal was the sloth. <laughs> Um, auspicious beginnings yes but i the the user experience in teams is i'll say simpler and more modern uh it's still more com complicated than slack and in part that's because teams i think is oriented at more complex team relationships and at this integration within office 365 you automatically get a team notebook when you make a team or a or a topic you can automatically uh, launch a phone call things that are in a conversation also work very well, well with link so for example at ba insight we're using teams when we never used yammer because it has an immediate real-time impact so I, I no longer wonder should i it's pretty clear when i should send an email versus when i should chat yammer for us was most effective for large groups and for external networks and we've taken to teams quite quickly my question for you both is, you know, as, as Peter already alluded to, um, you know, each of these major players has their own approach to infrastructure, right? With Microsoft, we have Office 365, as you mentioned, we have SharePoint, we have the, uh, their investment in, as we've talked a lot about on the show, uh, intelligence, machine learning, uh, the intelligent assistant model. We have, uh, you know, Facebook, obviously, and their uh, sort of deep uh, understanding of users and and their, the machine learning that goes into how well they are able to approach networks uh, and the social graph. Uh, and Slack, uh, it, I, I don't know what Slack brings to the table there beyond their extensions and creating an environment or an ecosystem where others can apply their uh, intelligent assistance into the Slack uh, network. I'm, I'm speaking wildly out of court there because I, I don't know what Slack has going on. But my question for you both is, what is your sense uh, on uh, uh, leadership in this race uh, stemming from investment, relative investment in infrastructure and intelligence that is that's sitting behind these collaboration tools if, if i were to boil it down there's there's two questions here one is are, are we going to predict a a winner in this battle which which i would not um I, I think because a lot of these tools are aligned with bigger suites certainly ibm and microsoft 
that makes it not exactly apples to apples. But I also think you can predict fallout with other vendors. For example, uh, at BA Insight, because of our connectors, we have relationships and a technical connection to most of, of these tools, including IBM connections, as well as Yammer, as well as Jive. Jive as an enterprise social network, I think, is the, the interesting one because I think it's, it's going to be very hard for them to have a path forward with the new darlings, the unicorns like, um, like Slack and the, the mega vendors. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Just to chime in on that, I think that there's going to be a lot of collateral damage in this market over the next year or two because, um, and as you point out, it's it's apples and oranges in the sense that some of these vendors are doing deep stacks. So with Microsoft, for instance, it's not just Teams, it's Office 365, it's Azure. There's good synergy with Dynamics 365 as well. And if you look at Facebook, it has its own supersized network of global data centers as well. And Google, I, w I wouldn't count Google out at this point. I agree that Google appears to sort of um, stumbled quite a bit in the last few years, especially with uh, big proclamations about how Wave and Google Plus and other things that just didn't catch on or were going to change the game. But coming back to the specialists ranging from Jive, which again, is I agree, has been out there for a long time and has a lot of very um, happy customers to newer players like Slack coming into it in late 2014. Um, I think that many organizations are going to find if they can rely on having fewer moving parts, maybe not a single uh, supplier, but if you, for instance, if you're already using Office 365 and you're made a big bet on Azure Active Directory and other services that go along with it, if you can have something like Teams at no additional cost and people are actually happy with it, then I think that puts the specialists in a very difficult position. Um, they can still mess it up. It's Teams is in preview mode at this point. It's expected to be in general availability by the end of um, Q1 2017. But I think that there, there will be a big challenge, going back to Pete's observation, there's going to be a big challenge for a breakout on this if it's basically a battle of attrition between cloud platform vendors and specialized apps running on top of somebody else's cloud platform, which also, by the way, kind of begs the question of what about Amazon? So I believe Slack runs entirely on Amazon, or at least initially did. And that's another example where perhaps Amazon, now being touted as a platform vendor itself with Alexa, would find it beneficial to pick one or two close partners to work with and um, align with them. but. Overall, I think that in the platform versus specialized player competition, it's unusual to see the specialized players come out with anything other than sort of uh, a, a Switzerland position. Yeah, because of many of the listeners on this podcast tend to be Microsoft-centric, there's one subject, which is, will Microsoft Teams live and succeed? Will Yammer die, et, et, et cetera? where my prediction is that teams will do well and Yammer will not die, that there's room for both. They'll just get better integrated. And then there's the, the subject of how will this market work out, where there's a number of great comparisons feature function, for example, of Teams versus Slack. The most interesting to me of this pack is actually Facebook, because it's a new entrant for them into the workplace. And Workplace by Facebook is probably the the, the new uh, face, if you will, in this in this market. D definitely agree. Just a few observations about the Microsoft side of it before we move on to Facebook, though. Just to because you touched on that, I, I do think that Teams, if it's successful, is going to have a pretty big impact on especially two or three other parts of the Microsoft portfolio. One of them, I agree with you, Yammer is at a crossroads and Yammer is itself, as we speak, being transitioned into the Office 365 and Azure 
infrastructure building on things like Office 365 groups. And I think even though Yammer has been a leader in enterprise social networking, I think it's an, a leader in a category that may be now subsumed into a set of features as a platform instead of a standalone thing. So I, I agree. I think m many organizations would look at Yammer and say, as you did, we use it for cross-company communication, like maybe management sending updates to everybody and for lightweight external um, conversations as well. But I think Yammer is going to be severely challenged by teams um, just as, you know, and again, as you mentioned earlier in the discussion, this is kind of surprising in that at Ignite 2016, coming out of that, it really felt at the end of September, of 2016, it really felt like Microsoft had sort of settled on its strategy and it was all coming together around SharePoint and OneDrive and Yammer had a pretty big role in it. And then five weeks later, they introduced Teams and basically say, don't worry, be happy because one size doesn't fit all and more is better. But I think that this is going to create real challenges for Yammer. And then another one on a smaller scale as well. And so I think that this changes the destiny of Skype because many organizations today actually do use Skype, maybe with mixed results, but because it's not optimized for this, but they use it for persistent work group chat. And now it looks like Skype is getting redoubled focus on real time communication, especially around voice and video. But another significant consideration in this is what does Teams mean for SharePoint? And SharePoint is another one that's in a transition right now from what's been called classic SharePoint into modern SharePoint. And now we introduce Teams. And there's even inconsistency within Microsoft, parts of Microsoft, where some position uh, SharePoint still is kind of the answer to all collaboration and content needs. And then others who are putting more of a Teams-centric approach to it say, no, SharePoint is still really important, but SharePoint is primarily around content and sites. And if you want to do work group collaboration, then you should focus on Teams. So I think, again, that's going to be an interesting one to see how this plays out. That That's going to take probably all year to settle. Yep. You know, my prediction uh, in the last podcast that, how did I put it? There were three things that would survive a nuclear holocaust. <laughs> uh, cockroaches, Mick Jagger, and Yammer. Really is a scenario where Yammer, which is getting a remarkable amount of adoption at the same time that Teams is coming out. It, it, it'll become a, a set of features that are part of your Office 365 subscription rather than a, an identity. Outlook groups for folks that are email focused are yet another scenario here. And LinkedIn, as it gets digested in Microsoft, has some other interesting implications. So it, 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 I, I can both simultaneously look at folks like Marks and Spencer that are already using multiple tools and different things for different folks uh, and say there's room for these and there's different scenarios and, and needs. And simultaneously say this is, this is a mess. There's a lot of moving pieces from different groups within Microsoft that are on independent trajectories. For folks that are deeply committed to Office 365, I'd just say, you know, hang on for the ride. And for folks that are trying to figure out across these mega players, you should just know that there'll be uncertainty for, I think, most of the year about the various investment and trajectory of the different collaboration and communication tools in the Microsoft suite. I think that one interesting dynamic in this and something that's galvanizing a lot of attention in the market, though, is the success of Slack. You know, I think a lot of people who have been working in communication and collaboration for a long time probably look at Slack pretty much as traditional enterprise content management specialists would look at things like Box, Dropbox, Google Drive, and OneDrive and say, how can something that appears to be this simple or even simplistic, be so successful and garner really large, loyal customer, you know, enthusiastic user bases where in many cases the the more incumbent products are not met with that level of enthusiasm. So I think that um, Slack and, and also Workplace by Facebook are leading indicators that at least for some people and probably people who are millennials or, or later are coming into this saying, no, that's that's actually already the way I work. So if you can give me something that's consistent with that, 
then I'm going to be immediately productive. Whereas if you give me a kitchen sink of tools and tell me, you know, make myself comfortable, I'm probably going to be a bit frustrated. Absolutely. Uh, the other aspect for me as a developer is the rise of bots in these. And yeah. I'll have to say I'm an old guy. So I, I grew up using something called IRC, which if you're not familiar with it, is, is the same paradigm, just designed as a character, you know, without as much hypertext. With Slack, it's quite easy to roll a, a Slack bot. And similarly with Teams, uh, you can create new tabs, you can create connectors, and you can create bots. I mean, there's a built-in, it's called a T-bot and an upcoming M-bot, but the, the, this is where you'll see, um, see or not a number of interesting apps built within these collaboration tools. Thanks to the fact that these are all based on real or de facto industry standards or internet standards now, um, Microsoft and others can also take advantage of all of the connector work that's been done with uh, by Slack and Slack's partners. So I think that that's going to accelerate pretty quickly. The, the broader theme in that, and again, it, there is this weird back to the future dimension to it because IRC goes back to 1988 and um, IRC chat, of course, was there as well. But I think it'll be interesting to see who can mainstream the user experience on this. And we've seen examples from Microsoft, from Facebook, from Slack, from others, where the killer app scenarios are things like, hey, we have a group of people who want to get pizza for lunch, help us coordinate the order and figure out who pays for what. But as these get into more business application domains and people figure out how to do this conversational style user experience where the applications are, in many cases, um, enabled by bots because you're not communicating exclusively with people. I think that that's going to be another really important dynamic. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I go back to, uh, I still use IRC, but I wrote in the late 80s exactly the app you're talking about <laughs> in, in my MIT lab. We had a bot that would... Uh, that you just had to say, get me a Coke, and we'd hacked the Coke machine so that it would dispense without any coins. And we had uh, an app I wrote that coordinated pizza orders uh, as a bot. So I can't wait to see that again. Again, yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny, both Twitter and Slack have kind of an unusual corporate history in the sense that in both cases, the products that people now use today, the services people use today, were actually side effects of organizations that were focused elsewhere. So with Twitter, it was it, it was an internal communication tool that was being used by a then failing podcast tools company. And with Slack, Slack was basically they it was a tip of the hat to IRC. You know, they started with a model that was very much like IRC, and that too was an internal communication tool that was being used. It was that at what was then a failing games company, and when um, the CEO Stuart Butterfield went back and said to his investors, "Look, we're done here. The games thing isn't going to work out." They said, and he he offered to refund the remaining money that the VCs had put in, the investors had put in, and the investors told him, no, go back and figure out something else to do because we believe in your team. And they basically said, well, you know, Slack is working pretty well for us and kind of built on it from there. So it, it is, in some respects, um, definitely history repeats. And pizza is, in fact, central to many software development environments. <laughs> I uh, it, this the, the Slack story is one that I think is particularly interesting. It is it, obviously right now it feels very much like the hipster darling, right? I mean, it's uh, it, it's got the cleverest ad uh, promotions work. It's got uh, it, I have seen it in in my own work. We create communities on Slack around a, a podcast, and the uptake in consumer interest is is very high, which surprised me for a tool that, as you mentioned, is is you know essentially a, IRC, the uh, uh, and it's not easy to join, right? It 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 requires sort of a closed. Every group is kind of a closed environment, and so it requires some hoops to jump through to to build these communities. But there's great interest when we have uh, Microsoft Teams coming from the enterprise, uh, and yet we have Facebook, which is very much built off of consumer uh, inter the way consumers interact with one another, and what Facebook knows about the social graft. What do you what do you what's your sense on how important 
important consumer expectations are in driving uh, development and uptake in these tools in the enterprise. Well, as you know, I, I scored myself against my predictions from 2015 and 16, and that consumerization of IT has not been, you know, it's been much longer horizon than that. If you don't have something that jives with the consumer experience, you're missing out. And that has been something that I think should be a Microsoft asset. For example, Skype is very much a consumer tool. And there's, you know, OneDrive consumer and OneDrive uh, business, uh, which I think has informed the increased simplicity of OneDrive for business. That's This is an area where I think the experience is really important. And as a search nerd, that is a, a huge theme that people's expectations based upon what they experience on you know amazon.com or uh, or tinder or what uh, every site is search driven and google.com works well yet the enterprise experience typically sucks and this is a a, a long standing theme in search and attention to that uh, consumer experience is important. Just like with search, it is a different problem. You can't replicate Google. You can't can neither afford to, nor does it fit an, an enterprise need. But you can learn a lot from it. I think these uh, collaboration tools have some business needs, not just around governance, but again around some of the ways people collaborate. Have a slight twist from the consumer tools, but. Unless you have a consumer grade experience, you're missing the boat. Well, I, I, I say that question. I ask that question, obviously, Jeff, as a as bait for you, uh, because I, <sighs> I I know that's one that's important to you. But also, let's shine a light on the fact that you're two. Key examples of how consumers work are Amazon and Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> no slacking there. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Peter, uh, doesn't this consumerization angle give Facebook a, a, a clear lead in 2017 as they get ready to, to roll out much more uh, aggressively? Yeah, I'm really, I'm really glad you asked that and to tie it back to Jeff's comments about workplace by Facebook as well. I think absolutely, you know, if you say one approximately 1 1.8 billion people today are regular users of Facebook. If you look at the top 10 smartphone apps between them, Facebook and Google control the top eight, according to Nielsen's most recent numbers. And it's clear that Facebook, even though maybe Facebook is not as considered as cool as it was before everybody's parents and grandparents started using it as well, uh, it, it has been very successful and responsive in providing a state-of-the-art user experience. And I, I think that a lot of people are going to be surprised by workplace, by Facebook, partly because it's just natural to apply patterns that we've seen before. So I think a great example of that is with Facebook, a lot of people are looking at it saying, this kind of reminds me of Google Apps for organizations. And if you go back to, I think it was 2006, when Google got started with that, after people realized that Gmail wasn't an April Fool's joke, then Gmail started to become really popular. Google just said, we're going to do this for organizations, educational and not-for-profit and corporate as well. And a lot of people thought, okay, that's maybe a 20% project from people who had uh, too much spare time at Google or something, and were they really serious about it? Are they going to? Were they going to do all that would be required to meet enterprise expectations? And similarly, I think now with Workplace by Facebook, some people look at it and say, "Forget it. Facebook is really an advertising company, just like Google is an advertising company. This is not going to be a way for them to diversify their business model. And look, this isn't even being developed in the Bay Area, so they can't be really serious about it." I think actually that, that it would be a mistake to write it off that way because there are a lot of things that first Facebook can bring to bear immediately that Google didn't have when it got started with what's now called G Suite. So conversations, groups, social actions, including non-trivial conversations, you know, for deeply nested or hierarchically arranged conversations. Facebook does that well. Specialists like Discuss do that well. Most of the other players don't do it that well, and that's a long-standing request that Slack's going to address real soon now as well. But I think there, there are two dynamics with Facebook that are especially important. One of them is that 
if you are already if you are already using Facebook, then you don't need to be trained on Workplace by Facebook. It is a separate um, system. There is no crossover between the two, but the the news feed, the groups, the social actions, the real time tools. They have Work Chat instead of Facebook Messenger. People will be immediately productive with it. And second, from a business model perspective, Facebook is charging for this. I don't know if they're looking at cost recovery or trying to actually turn it into a more profitable business. But from an overall Facebook strategy perspective, you, you, know, you consider Facebook's biggest business clearly is the consumer service. And people are always speculating about like what's going to be the next Facebook and maybe Snap is going to be the one that um, takes a real run at them. But from a Facebook perspective, you take the bigger picture and say, if I'm using Workplace by Facebook at work, then I'm probably going to be less inclined to dump Facebook in my consumer life as well. So I think there's a nice um, positive aspect of this for Facebook that is if you are using Workplace, you're probably going to be in a deeper relationship with Facebook outside of work as well. But I, I also think that workplace, just by virtue of being able to take into organizational communication collaboration contexts, I think the, the depth of what Facebook has already delivered on the consumer side, when it's adapted to more work environments is going to surprise a lot of people. It's it's not just lightweight chat. There's a lot going on there. Jeff, uh, for 2017, can you give us some, a sense of what BA Insight is doing uh, in this space, particularly with Teams? Um, I can. There's only so much I'll disclose on a podcast, so I'll turn this into a, a question for the listeners about what their take is and what their needs are. We're obviously quite close to Microsoft, and that will continue. And much as we have built out an ability to use Yammer and index Yammer and reuse it as a knowledge base or surface it in other places, we'll be able to do exactly the same thing with Teams. The scenario that I'm interested in feedback on, though, is connectors and bots into your team based upon content and signals that may be from any system out there. And that's one we're actively prototyping, but I'm actively looking for listener feedback around, oh, there is a new report that's relevant to this team that shows up automatically within Microsoft Teams. So if you have ideas uh, around that or needs or use cases, I'm all ears. Excellent. And as always, we'll put the um, uh, contact link for Jeff right in the show notes. Just scroll up in your podcast player, you will find it. As we wrap up, I wonder if you could each uh, give uh, some brief insights or suggestions or advice for listeners in terms of how they uh, approach building out their collaboration communication suite in 2017. Peter, will you start? Sure. At a high level, just a few suggestions. One is, I think it's really important for everybody who's been working in this domain for a while to check their assumptions because this isn't just about better, faster, cheaper. This is really a different way of interacting with people. And it's something that I think can deliver on some longstanding promises from the vendors. Um, a second one, a second suggestion would be provide clear guidance to your employees on what to use when. Don't just leave it as a free for all because um, then even though you, you, you'll get some pressure relief from being able to have integrated uh, unified search, for instance, it's it's better if, for instance, if Teams is going to be a big bet for the organization, then you should give people clear guidance about when to use Teams versus other conversational tools. Um, another high level um, suggestion is I think that organizations that are moving to Office 365 are going to find that Teams, if it's successful, is going to significantly increase end user demand for Office 365. For, for many organizations, Office 365 from an end user point of view has been mostly about email and OneDrive and then continuing with classic SharePoint on-premises um, for many things because there just wasn't a super strong business case for moving. And there are other tools in Office 365, but if Teams is successful and it can tap into the kind of energy that uh, Slack and HipChat and Workplace, for instance, are addressing, then I think that's going to spike end user demand for Office 365. And last but not least with that, I think 
it's really important, as Jeff was just suggesting in, in general, to think about the integration and migration dimensions for this. So if Teams turns out to increase the, the momentum for Office 365, then I think that puts more emphasis on how do you modernize and migrate your traditional collaborative applications instead of just saying, leave them in place and integrate them on the glass. What are you personally most excited about this year in this space, Peter? So I, I have to say, I acknowledge at the outset, I'm a bit of an outlier on this, but I think the battle is going to be joined between Microsoft and Facebook. I, and I have a ton of respect for Slack and what the Slack team has accomplished. And I don't think they're going to go away anytime soon. But I do think that the deep platform synergies and the familiar user experiences with both Microsoft and Office and Outlook and then with Facebook on the consumer side. I think that those are going to uh, lead to some really interesting dynamics, including, by the way, the one, one kind of interesting trivial pursuit observation on this is Facebook itself is an Office 365 customer, and they're going to use it for email. They're going to use it for for the productivity applications, but they believe, I think, pretty strongly that uh, Office 365 can be complemented by a tool such as Workplace. So anyway, shorter answer to your question is, I think that the main competitive challenge here for 2017 is going to be the big surprise will be um, Workplace and Microsoft will have a much stronger case with Teams as part of their their product set, then the onus is on the other players, especially Google, IBM, um, Slack, Jive, others, to see if they can remain in the first tier. Excellent. Uh, Jeff, what are your thoughts? I'm, I'm surprised how much I agree with Peter uh, on so many points. I, I guess what I'll add is, in general, to not get whiplash. This is a, a very turbulent space, and there's a lot of hype, but all of these alternatives are good and solid alternatives. And even within the Microsoft suite, things aren't going to go away overnight. So you, you don't necessarily need to follow things blow by blow or jump on the latest and greatest. You should focus on the people and what they're trying to do. So completely agree with Peter's guidance of don't make it a free-for-all. Give users two or maybe three options for different modalities, but not everything. And there, I think the governance word, we already talked about the two of the three Gs uh, being groups and, and graph, but uh, the governance part, certainly in Office 365, is, is quite important. And last but not least, this, this is an integration play, however you look at it. You, know, it. you might end up using Slack integrated in with Office 365, just like you might use Facebook at work. And the the same pre-integration within the Office 365 suite is is compelling. But if you do the integration well, you can bring in things from any of the specialized tools or even one of the other mega vendors. So don't get whiplash, focus on the people, and remember it's about integration. Great advice as always, uh, and I, I I can't wait. I'm I'm still in Slack, but uh, only for now. It sounds like uh, so the gauntlet the gauntlet has been thrown here. Uh, but thank you so much, Peter O'Kelly, O'Kelly Associates. Thanks for your time and uh, expertise today, Peter. It's great having you on the show. My pleasure. Thanks again. Uh, we have put all kinds of links in the show notes. As always, you can find them either at bainsight.com, uh, look in our podcast section there, or you can just scroll up in the show notes in your podcast player of choice. They're right there. Great links and resources, including uh, how you can find out more about Peter O'Kelly. Jeff, as always, it is a real pleasure talking with you today. Absolutely. And enjoy your slacking. <laughs> now you just made it weird. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening to this show. On behalf of Jeff and Peter, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next time right here on Shared Insights, the podcast from BA Insight.